Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 12 The Five-Fold Divine Functions Chakra O Saroruha, Lotus Goddess, if the beginningless jiva is thy power of pure consciousness, why does it suffer from the effects of klesha, karma, and ashaya? What are these kleshas? How many are they? What is the nature of deeds, and how do they operate? What is ashaya, O goddess, and what are its consequences? O daughter of the ocean, I bow down to thee again and again. O omniscient goddess, thou alone canst explain these to me. Shri I am goddess Narayani, consisting of pure and infinite consciousness. I am Vishnu's independent and absolute Shri. I have created two distinct categories. One relates to Isha, the Lord. The other to Ishitavya, that which is governed. Again, on my own initiative, I have split up the Ishitavya into two groups, through the power of consciousness evolving on one hand as Bhoktra, the enjoyer, and on the other as Bhogya, the object enjoyed. In this latter group, I again make two classifications, Kala and Kalya, time and those influenced by it. Between time and those influenced by it, the Shakti representing Kalya acts as a temptress. She captivates and is at the same time the primordial source, Prakriti. Bhogtri, the Shakti of consciousness, is fettered by her and by all her vikara, evolutions. There are five ways in which the Shakti of consciousness Bhoktri is subjected to suffering, and these five are called kleshas. Now hear their names Tamas, Moha, Mahamoha, the darkness called Andha, and Avidya. These are the five phases of the supreme course of klesha, darkness or illusion. Though the Shakti of consciousness is essentially aloof, pure, and changeless, she manifests herself in a form that is affected by Klesha. Chakra I find the notion of connecting the Shakti of consciousness with Klesha confusing. My mind is baffled. O Padmajar, Please dispel my confusion. Shri I am the eternal, independent Shakti of Narayana, the source of all achievement, the mysterious goddess, continuously engaged in creating. O King of the Gods, I have five ever-existing functions, Tirobhava, Srishti, Stiti, Sanghriti and Anugraha. O Chakra, hear a systematic description of these functions. Tirobhava is said to be appearing differently, disguising one's own nature. That particular Shakti of mine, called Tirobhava, is also known as Avidya Shakti. Through her influence, my Chit Shakti, the Shakti of Consciousness called the Enjoyer, though pure by nature, is affected by Prakriti. Tirobhava is the influence of nescience covering the real nature of self, which leads to all sorts of false notions of individuality, agency, and involvement. In accordance with my firm resolve, I differentiated myself, 
I have already revealed to you the descending order of my differentiated forms in Chapter 5. Chit Shakti is called Jiva, the individual self, by the learned. Its multiplicity is due to my own free will. The supreme Avidya Shakti, referred to as Tirobhava, is the Shakti by which I identify my modification Chaitya, created by me in accordance with my firm resolve. With Chit Shakti, Cognition. Tirobhava has five components. Now hear me describe them. Tamas is indeed its first component, named Avidya. It represents the element of cognition whereby the jiva identifies itself with material objects other than souls or the self inherent in the jiva. This tamas, or avidya, is regarded as the jiva's ego, swa, and self-consciousness, aham. When a material object is identified with the self-consciousness of the jiva, the ego consciousness thereby originated is the second component of klesha, maha-moha, also referred to as asmita. The identification of consciousness with material objects through the influence of avidya is termed moha, asmita, and maha-moha. Vasana, impressions, combined with asmita, which causes pleasant recollections, is called raga, whose objects are pleasant things, and that is the third component of klesha. An impression combined with asmita, which causes unpleasant recollections, is called dvesha, whose objects are repulsive. This is the fourth component of klesha. The anxiety about possible obstacles experienced by aspirants while they are eager for happiness and attempting to repel misery by various forms of yoga is the abhinivesha called andha which is the fifth component of klesha. Regarding the body as self and hence identifying the two, seeking objects of pleasure and shunning those that do not afford pleasure, fearing obstacles to the attainment of pleasant and avoidance of unpleasant objects, and attempting to remedy that situation, Whatever activity the conscious jiva is engaged in to acquire what is coveted and to avoid what is repugnant can be classified under three headings. Such activities are referred to as karman by sages and true masters of sankhya and yoga. In the science of tattvas, cosmic principles, the learned call the consequences of karman which entail happiness, misery, or a mixture of both, the threefold vipaka. Vasanas, impressions, produced by the vipakas of the klesha karman, are known as ashaya, the stock or balance of the fruits of previous works, which lies stored in the mind in the form of mental deposits of merit or demerit until they ripen in the individual's experience. They lie completely buried in the internal organ. Vasanas are constantly produced by the five components of kleshas. Vasana is, on the one hand, the source from which appropriate action springs, and again, the vipakas produce three types of vasana, happiness, suffering, and neutral. Thus, the cycle of vasana, karman, and vipaka continues without break. In this way, the shakti called tirobhava, marked by klesha, karman, vipaka, and ashaya, imposes bondage on the jiva kosha. Through this tirobhava power of mind, 
arising from the fettered jivas, my other saktis, such as shrishti, etc., function uninterruptedly. According to purity and impurity, my srishti shakti can be classified into two categories, which I have already described to you in detail. Srishti Shakti, in her turn, can be classified in seven ways. First is the state when she creates incessantly through exercising the functions called Prajapatya. The other six consecutive states of Srishti occur in the six koshas at their respective times. In the course of cosmic creation, Srishti, evolving from Prakriti, is known to be of three types. Bhavaki, related to becoming, Langiki, related to the subtle body, and Bhautiki, related to nature, the environment. Just as the banyan tree exists dormant in the seed, so does the creation consisting of Mahat, etc., exist in Prakriti, composed of the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. This is known as Bhava Srishti, the dormant state of creation. The Linga, subtle body, that I create is classified as cosmic and as individual, belonging to Viraj, the macrocosmic aspect of self imminent in every created object and to the individual souls, and represents the state of creation called Lingaja. The 23 tattvas, cosmic principles, starting with Mahat and ending with Vishesha, the gross elements Akasha, air, fire, water, and earth, are said to be incorporated by the subtle body of Viraj. The unit of the collective senses with antakarana existent in the three states, buddhi, ahankara, and manas, which inheres in each jiva and has been described before as the subtle body of gross living beings, the eighteen inner and outer senses, and kleshas, karmans, vasanas, and the pranas, vital airs, go to make up the above-mentioned linga-sharira, subtle body, inherent in the gross bodies of the jivas. The chit-shakti existing in the linga-sharira journeys through the transient world, life after life. Only when in consequence of many good deeds the individual acquires true knowledge of God, and not before that does the subtle body of the jiva cease to exist. Viraja's gross body, usually called Brahmanda, the universal egg, and the other four types of gross bodies of the embodied jivas, Yonija, womb-born animals, Andaja, egg-born birds and reptiles, Svedaja, sweat-born insects and vermin, and udbhidja, sprout-born plants, go to make up my bhautiki creation. This ends my consideration of creation. Now listen, Chakra, and I will explain to you the nature of the third of my shaktis, already referred to as stiti, that which continually exists, the world, earth. Through my ability to assume various forms, the function of sustaining that which exists in the time between the moment of creation and the moment my will to destroy the creation awakens is called my supreme shakti of stiti, or maintenance, my coexistence with Vishnu, the Supreme God, in each specific form, is considered by the enlightened to be the first stiti. My coexistence with the rulers of Manvantaras, the Manus, 
is said to be the second sthiti. My coexistence with the sons of Manus, the Saptarshi, etc., is the third, and my coexistence with the Kshudra, the ordinary creation, is the fourth sthiti. My fourth Shakti is Sanghriti, destruction of the universe. And now hear her different types. That which causes the constant destruction of the individuals classified as Yonija, etc., is called the Nitya Sanghriti, Shakti of destruction. The second type is called Naimitiki Sanghriti, affects all three worlds and is the cause of Brahma's deep sleep at the end of each kalpa, when the three worlds are dissolved during Brahma's night. The third type is known as Prakriti Sangriti and influences Mahat, etc. The fourth type is Prasuti Sangriti and influences Avyakta, Prakriti. Mayi Sangriti is the fifth type affecting prasuti. Shakti Sanghriti is the sixth type, affecting maya. The seventh type is called Atyantiki Sanghriti, and she merges the yogins in me, liberating them. When that liberation takes place, the pious devotees exist only in their most subtle bodies, Ananda Maya Kosha. O Chakra, I have thus dealt with the seven types of my Shakti of destruction.